Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. How are you all doing today? Welcome to another webinar session brought to you by Talent Bank. My name is Hanis and I'll be your host and moderator today. Before I begin, I would like to say uh, thank you so much everyone for coming. I hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe. Um, please, uh, it's a wonderful morning for a webinar session. I know that some of you may prefer to be out, uh, but if you do, please practice all SOP and maintain social distancing at all times. Um, kita jaga kita. So join with us this morning is Encik Umar, Head Recruitment and Sourcing Management from TM, who will be sharing with us his topic, how to write an outstanding resume. Welcome, Encik Umar. So, okay. Uh, stand, TM has been nominated for the 2021 Graduates' Choice Award. Uh, you can stand a chance to win some fabulous prizes as you vote in our Graduate Choice Award, show your support to Telecom Malaysia by voting them as your choice of employer. Uh, you can vote by scanning the QR code or visiting at the link below. So do give your support by voting at uh, voting TM in the government link category and the telecommunications category and win amazing prizes along with it. Uh, stand a chance to win uh, an Apple iPhone 12 all the way up to a Spectre HP laptop. Yeah. So first up, uh, some few session logistics. Uh, you can use the Zoom Q&A function to share any questions during the session. Um, throughout the session, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and uh, just post it in the Q&A and we will address it later in the Q&A session. Yeah? Uh, also, if you do, please uh, also leave your name and email address along with your questions so that uh, because you will stand a chance to win a special token courtesy of Telecom Malaysia. Next up, you can use the Zoom chat function to share any comments you have with the panelists. Um, any of your, any comments, you can leave it in the chat, yeah? And as well that this session will be recorded for future playback. And also to address all the UCSI students, if you are asking about your ELE points, uh, please refer back to your university management as they will have the attendance record uh, for this session. Yeah, So for all of you who are asking for the ELE points and your attendance, uh, please be informed that your attendance is already recorded. Okay. So uh, before I move on to the, to the speaker's session, uh, let's watch a short video. Together, we found new ways to live, to play, to learn, to work. Together, let's rebuild better livelihoods. better opportunities a better society a better economy A 
Digital Malaysia. Together, kita jaga kita. Our children. Our communities. Together, making life and business easier for a better Malaysia. An introduction of our speaker today. Encik Huma is Head Recruitment and Sourcing Management. He is responsible for internal and external recruitment for TM Group, including managing leasing agency, internship and protege program. A Yayasan Telecom Malaysia scholar, Encik Huma started his career with TM Research and Development as assistant researcher, specializing in radio frequency for five years. In 2012, he ventured into occupational safety and health environment as a safety and health officer before being assigned to an additional role as HR in 2013. After 10 years with TM Research and Development, he ventured into TM1 with focus on recruitment as well as TM1 Academy for execution of TM1 institutional capability. Currently, he is now in the human capital business operations, managing recruitment and sourcing for TM Group. So with that, um, let's sit back and enjoy this webinar and welcome Encik Umar to the floor. Encik Umar, are you there? Right. Uh, thank you, Anis. So, okay. um, good morning, Assalamualaikum, and good morning, everyone. Salam. So for today, um, I'm just going to give you some tips. And it's not going to be a workshop on how to write a resume. Today, I will just share you the insight of what the hiring manager or employer look for from your resume. Okay, uh, some people call it resume, some people call it CV. Okay, so in a simple word, resume is a summary of your experience where CV is more comprehensive and details on your experience and achievement, but both have the same goal. Okay for you to use for any job application. Um, this is the most important document when you graduate because um, it will start off well, for you to apply a job. So before we start um, to produce a resume and the purpose of the resume. So you need to question yourself, what is the purpose of a resume? You need, to, uh, you need to understand this in order for you to know the information that required to be in the resume. Okay, uh, we go to the next slide, please. Uh, next. Okay, uh, resume is a marketing tool um, that summarizes a person's skills, experience, uh, your education, and unique. Uh, factors okay so that that is a rhetorical part so i will give you a layman term for you to easy to, for you to understand i give analogy on this so when you buy a new phone what do you look for so i need uh, participation from the floor okay so i need about two people to answer the question so when you want to buy a new handphone what exactly that you look for um at the handphone specification. Okay, anyone from the floor? All right, guys, if you have, uh, if you'd like to join us on the floor, uh, just raise your hand and I will select the first two participants. Yeah. Just introduce your name, uh, which VP are you from, and which course you are taking, and then uh, you can answer the question of what do you look for when you buy a handphone? Yep. Anyone? 
Okay, we have uh, Daniel Su. Yes, Daniel. Okay, Daniel, you're in the panelist uh, section. You can just on your video and share a little bit of introduction about you about yourself. Sorry, uh, internet connection isn't very good. Could, could I just use the uh, mic instead? Yeah, sure. All right. Yes. Uh, what was the question again? Uh, to share a little bit of introduction. Um, yeah, I do say about you, and then I will, I will answer the question of um, when you want to buy a new handphone, what do you look for? I see. So, hi, my name is Daniel Bryan. I am a music student from UCSI, and when I buy a handphone, I think what I really look okay. I'm I'm not. I don't know whether some of you feel the same, but when I buy a handphone, what I'm really looking for is uh quality of camera. Quality of camera. Okay. Danny, all right? Sorry? Okay, uh, what, why do you focus on camera? Um, part of, one of my hobbies is that I like doing photography. I haven't been doing it. I, I've been, my current phone right now, the camera is good, but it doesn't always have the possibility. It doesn't really have the features to capture certain uh, images that I want to capture. So I really like having a, a better camera on the phone. Okay. If I'm offering you um, a handphone, but just a normal basic camera, would you stay by it or you prefer to look for other handphone? Well, that depends on the kind of handphone first. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, because, it, uh, because it's really, I know I understand that it's difficult to find a with a really good Perfect. camera so yeah. i would um for an alternative i would probably also pick a um a phone with a lot of with a lot of uh, ram and space space so yeah. if you could get, so even if you get me a not so good camera but you can get me a phone with a good amount of space on it that would be fine sure all right uh thank you is daniel right Yes. Yeah, Daniel. Okay, thank you for your participation and um, feedback on the question. So, uh, can we have another participant? Yeah, we have uh, Encik Asmu. Asmu. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Salam. Okay, uh, uh, my name is um, Asmu E. So, I'm a graduate uh, student, physics. Is it okay? Uh, physics. Uh, so uh, the question is, uh, if I want to buy the handphone, I look at the specification and the ease of use. Okay. Uh, specification. Which part? The camera, the RAM, the battery. Uh, because uh, now the uh, smartphone can do everything. It's like a small computer. So yes. I I have uh, research on the operating system, the application, the RAM, the processor. Uh, so so there, there's uh, some specification that you look for, right? Uh, and uh, there is uh, use of the uh, smartphone, smartphone. Smartphone. Like uh, for Android, if, uh, for uh, if it's a tool for uh, developer uh, for for iPhone maybe is a is a step maybe a stable operating system and a slick look it's like this yeah. but uh, I'm more prefer to Android because Android. I, I I like to uh, to and to to contribute to the okay All right uh thank you Asmo for your feedback. So uh, thank you for Daniel and Afro for uh, Asmu for taking part of with this question. Okay, why I ask this question is that um, what we can conclude from here. Okay, when you want to buy a new handphone, it's all depend on your usage and it's all depend on your requirement. Okay, for example, given by Daniel. Okay, um, he prefer handphone with a uh, high resolution of camera because he likes to take photography and that kind of thing. So he focuses on camera um, with the storage. 
okay? Whereas uh, Asmo is prefer on the Android, and then um, its usage is mostly for the normal daily usage of the handphone, which can represent to cover up for the laptop if they were, you want to do a meeting or that kind of things, okay? So everyone has their own preferable, okay? So another example is that if you are a gamer, you play games uh, using your handphone, your PUBG and that kind of thing, Mobile Legend. So people actively playing games, you will look for smartphone with speed, high resolution screen, uh, battery, battery lifetime, so that it will be main, your main criteria for the phone that you look for, okay? But um, those who focus on updating the social media, the photography, so they will focus on camera and high resolution uh, megapixel of the camera, okay? So, what does that, so in that case, what do the seller do to promote and highlight the specification of the phone that the target buyer, okay? If the target buyer is the gamer, they will focus on the RAM, size of the screen, the battery, okay? Like if I want to sell it to Daniel, of course I will highlight on the camera. That would be my main item that I will highlight because I will get capture of his attention for him to buy my handphone. Okay, so I have a higher chance to sell my handphone to Daniel. Okay, if I have a, a good high megapixel uh, pixel of the camera. Okay, so it's the same thing goes when you're producing a resume. Think yourself as a seller and the company that you're applying for are the buyer. Okay, so you need to know what's the company want, what are their requirements, then you will know the information that you need to include inside your resume, okay? Because you need to bear in mind, resume will not get you a job, okay? That, that's for sure, you, you will not get a job just because of your resume. A resume will just land you an interview. The number one of the goal of your resume is to capture the reader attention and get the person to say, when they back through your resume, yeah, I think I got to speak to this guy. Okay. That is the goal of your resume. You want to get the hiring manager attention, so they will call you for an interview. Okay. Um, the hiring manager normally do not spend a lot of time uh, back through your resume because I'll just give an example at the end. So for one position, normally there's about more than 500 applications. Okay. You just bear in mind that like, if we have uh, five vacancies or 10 vacancies, with 500 applied per vacancies. So how much resume that we need to go back to? You know, going to do the system, then it's still a lot of resume that we need to uh, scan and shortlist for the interview. So let's say if the hiring manager spend one minute per, in, per resume, then it, let's say they have 50 resume that they need to vet through. So they have to spend around one hour just to vet through 50 sets of resume. So honestly, the hiring manager will not do that. Okay, they don't have time to do that. So what they do is that normally, based on the research that they have done in the survey with the hiring manager across the world, normally the hiring manager will spend only 10 to 10 seconds to view and vet through your resume. So Nobody gonna scan and gonna read a resume word by word. Okay, normally they just screen, and then you have only fifteen seconds to capture their attention. So you need to know how to capture their attention to make sure your resume is being selected and viewed for the interview session. Okay, so um. For a good resume, we need to answer a certain question that you need to ask yourself and the answer you have to put inside your resume. So, you go to the next slide, please, Anis. Okay, for a good resume, you should answer these four questions. The first one is, who am I? The second one is, what can I offer? The third one is, what have I done? And the fourth one is, what do I know? Okay, I will go through one by one of this question 
and explain to you in more detail what you should add on and how to answer this four question and how to put it inside your resume. Okay, we go to the first question. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, on your personal contact information. Okay, the first thing and the most important thing is that on the top part of your resume, just put your full name. Okay, do not put your nickname because um, it'll be easier for the hiring manager to contact and differentiate each candidate because um, sometimes the candidate have the same name. So make sure you have the full name, including your surname. Okay, just um, if preferable, just use your name as in your IC or your passport. Okay, so easier for the hiring manager to differentiate the candidates. Okay, the second one is on your address. Do put in your address. If you don't want to put your full address, then just put the location and just put the location. So that the hiring manager will know that um, when you're applying for the job, are you a local or are you um, from other state? So it will contribute for their um, decision making, whether to select you or not. Because, it's, for example, if the position is in Johor, and you are living in in police so we will consider that um, for you to travel if you have a family then that is the thing that the hiring manager will will um, evaluate whether is it okay for you to uh, migrate from police to Johor and then that kind of thing so if they have a candidate in Johor then and they prefer the job task is on shift, on on call, so they will prefer someone in Johor. So that, that is an example that I can show um, tell you here. Because it just indicates the location where you are, so the hiring manager will, will know uh, exactly where is you living right now. Okay, and the next one is on your email. Uh, previously, yes, you send your resume through post that, that was about 10 to 15 years ago okay now when people apply for a job they will submit through online portal or even directly email to the hiring manager okay so ensure that your email address in your, your resume is correct and make sure that it is uh, professional do not use um, the email address your personal email address like um, you put abakacha at gmail.com or um, killerslayer at gmail.com that one if you use it for your personal personal email to play games that's okay but to apply for a job so make sure that you put an email address that is professional preferable your name including your surname at gmail.com or yahoo.com that kind of things okay so make it as professional so that it will show that your character of you applying you're seriously applying for a job okay uh, your phone number make sure it's there is correct because the hiring manager will call you directly um, to your phone number if you have um, updated your phone number or using the old numbers then um, it's difficult for the hiring manager to contact which will lose the opportunity to be called for an interview okay and then the last one just include your social media your linkedin um, id or if you have a youtube that you showcase your work for example if you have some blog or that you have showcased your artwork or uh, in YouTube, if you have a YouTube channel, so you put it inside your social media, um, the link inside your resume so that the hiring manager can view and evaluate your work if it's available. Okay, so when you set your personal information, contact information, just take a moment and make sure and think about uh, the information you've given a professional, focusing on your email. Okay. All right, we go to the next question on personal aspiration. Okay, uh, if you look at the most of the resumes, they will tend to people tend to put objective. 
Okay, they put the personal contact and then the second they put objective. Cool. So objective is not relevant anymore. Don't put objective inside. You're, you're saying that uh, I'm a fresh graduate looking for a job that blah, 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 blah. So yes, we know that when you produce a resume, you apply for a job, you are, of course you are applying for a job, All right? So don't put objective that I'm a um, fresh graduate looking for the, okay? So for the personal expression, what you need to, to highlight here is your personal aspiration, okay? So make it a simple, clear and concise uh, statement, okay? Before I elaborate more on this, I just want to make a poll um, asking the question of before you join this webinar session, do you know um, who am I uh, as a speaker? Because I'm sure that most of you do not know me. Okay, so I, I just want to uh, make a poll here. So we need to check whether before the start of this webinar, how many people that actually inside this uh, webinar session know the speaker? Um, Hanis, can we have a poll? Yeah, uh, poll's already launched. It will take about one minute to get everyone to answer. Yeah. Okay, maybe while we are waiting, I just want to uh, remind everyone again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please do post in the Q&A function and selected questions will earn, and, uh, will earn a special token courtesy of TM. So leave your name and email address as well. Okay, we have another 10 seconds before we end the poll. So let's see the result. All right. Okay, Juma, here are the results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so only 87% that know me, uh, that do not know me, and 90% have uh, indirectly um, have engaged with me before, I think, because there's 90 people there. So we have 87 that do not know uh, exactly who am I. Okay, <laughs> so. This is the point that, that I'm going to share here, okay? So if you don't know me as a speaker, okay, because I'm, I'm not a public figure or that kind of thing, so why did you join this webinar? Yeah, that's the question. So for sure, most of you do not know me. Uh, we take a poll and 87% do not know uh, or never engage with me. So why did you join this webinar? Okay, what I assume here, maybe you join the, this webinar session because you see the headline, how to write an astounding resume that trigger for you to check it out, right? So that's headline that got your attention. It's not because of me, it's because of the headline for you to join this session, okay? So you have to do the same thing for your resume. You have to get the attention of the hiring manager within 10 seconds when they review your resume. So you need to create a strong headline because the hiring manager definitely do not know you, but they attract to you because of your strong headline. It's the same thing as the poll that we have just done right now. Okay, 87% do not know the speaker, but still attended this webinar. It's about 232 people attended this webinar right now, if I'm not mistaken, um, based on the attendance. So out of 232, 87% attended the webinar because of the strong headline, okay? So what do you need to do for your resume? The hiring manager will not know you, so you need to create a strong personal statement to get their attention, okay? You, you need to sell yourself before even you create your resume, okay? You start off with your personal brand. You start with your self-awareness, you start by knowing who you are, how you can add value, and what you can do differently, and what you can change that you can do to the company that you're applying for. This is about you and setting yourself as a premium product on the market. Okay? Because nobody knows you right now, 
because um, there's a lot of hiring managers, a lot of company available, but you are not there yet in the market. Okay, so you need to set yourself, your brand, so make uh, to make yourself as a premium product on the market. Okay, it's just, it's just like selling a, a, um, a thing that, that you're going to sell. Now you are selling your brand. Okay, you need to craft a strong personal brand statement. A brand statement can be uh, one or two sentences long and it should answer what you are best at, the value that you can bring, who you are capable of helping and how you can best serve the company and help uh, for them to, self, uh, to solve their problem and how you can do it differently from others. Okay, So you need to show your unique selling proposition. Okay, Because um, the headline, the aspiration, your aspiration is very critical because that is the second element that the hiring manager will look at. First, they will look at your contact and then they will look at your aspiration. So if you can capture their attention during this part, then they will follow up to the next stage. Okay? If this stage is, um, is not that good, maybe they don't even look at the at your bottom part of your resume. So the aspiration part is very critical just for you to capture their attention and ensure that they are looking at a good candidate. Okay, so I want to highlight here is that please craft a strong personal brand statement. Okay, I just give you an example with the pool. So you can see um, even the example that I showed you is that um, easy for you to understand even you don't know that person with the strong headline, the strong topic, you will join the session, even if you don't know the speaker, whether it's good or just a normal speaker. But you still attended, you still spend one hour of your time, invest one hour of your time to join and listen to this webinar. Okay, so it's the same thing. Okay, you put a strong uh, personal brand statement so that the hiring manager will spend more time to look at your resume instead of spending six seconds or 10 seconds on your resume maybe he can spend about 30 seconds or one minute to just vet through everything inside your resume so a strong personal brand statement will capture the attention of the hiring manager so that you have higher chances for your resume to be uh, selected okay so um then we go to the next question. Anis? Yes. Uh, okay, the next question is, what have I done? Okay, this is based on your experience. Explain about your experience, your accomplishment, the activities that you have done, because most of, uh, most of you are fresh graduate and without any working experience. So the, the activities that you do during your study is important okay this is the thing that you can share that you can take advantage of okay because you know if you have a working experience then it's okay just share your working experience if not then you have to utilize the experience the activities the project involvement during the university stage for you to share inside your resume okay uh, you're doing a lot of activities participating in a lot of program at the university level that give you that kind of accomplishment that you can put inside your resume. So it can make your resume look professional. Okay. Um, you do much more in terms of the activity, participation. Okay, take advantage of it and put it inside your resume. Okay. So just although you don't have working experience, but the activities that you do at the university, you can include that as part of your experience and accomplishment okay so we go to the next um question what do i know okay okay so for what do i know is for you to share your skill in terms of personal skills or your hard skills okay so like I said before, most of you are fresh graduate and looking for your first job. So you might not have any experience. So you, one of the things that you need to understand when the organization, a good organization, a strong organization, 
they not only look at your skills, but they also look at cultural fit. Okay, they look it call cap your capability and your achievement. Okay, uh, I will explain this in details for you to understand more um, of why I'm giving you this contact. Okay, um, if you are interviewing for a good organization, they're looking for more than particular of a job. Okay, they will look for someone that has the capability. So what do I mean by capability? Okay, you need to understand uh, the term of capability that the hiring manager look for. Okay, capability demonstrate your capacity to do something that uh, you have not done before. Okay, because you do not have an experience. So they will just look at your capability to do something that they think will contribute um to the uh, and add value to the company so you need to figure out what are the capabilities um that make a good person for the company that you're applying for you have to show you have to add value um to the company so don't not put a laundry of list of skills that's too generic like leadership perfectionist hardworking, good communication skill because nobody cares about um, those skills because it's only your opinion about yourself. Okay? Resume is not a place for you to express your opinion uh, of yourself. Okay? What you need to do is to state the facts and evidence of those skills. You have to show the evidence. Okay? Uh, let's say if you are a good leader and you manage people, so you have to show what did your team accomplish, what you inspire them to do, or what you teach them to do. Um, you have to show the evidence of it. Okay, not just stating that a good uh, I'm a good leader. So what is the example? You have to show example. I'm giving you an example of a salesperson. Okay, the most effective one uh, of a salesperson are excellent communicator. Okay, they are good listener. They have got a great leadership and influencing skills. So they know how to tell a story so that when they are working with the customer, they can figure out what the customer needs and show them exactly how their product or services map to the requirement. Okay. All of the skills uh, that I've just lighted, you have, can gain. You can gain those skills even without having experience as a salesperson okay so on your resume you need to highlight the the capabilities that you have um, think of a reporter and show the company or reviewer how you have the leadership skills listening skills uh, communication skill and so on uh, this stuff that you need to put um, inside your resume then you need to include your technical skills Describe about the technical courses that you have attended or any certification that you have. Um, read through the job requirement and look at the technical skill that required. So put those technical skills inside your resume so it will get noticed. So it will match with the requirement of the job. Okay? Um, share your experience or any project related to that skills. Showcase what you have and achievement inside uh, blog or YouTube or even your LinkedIn. So put it there so that people can view your work, your achievement. You have to share uh, with the hiring managers so they can evaluate on that. Um, that that's the reason that I have um, request you to put your personal social media account uh, at the top of your resume so that people can look at your work and also you can showcase your talent. Okay. This will be a huge advantage compared to others. Okay. So when you write um, your accomplishment, your activities, just keep this rule that um, I'm applying during, when I apply for a job and if, even I've, right now if I'm doing my work, what I do is that just keep this rule. But whenever you uh, write your statement, just put it, inform about the action that you do result that you achieve and the impact so from there people will evaluate okay the thing that you do the capability that you have the result that you achieve 
from that activities and the impact that you give to the company. So whenever you write, please uh, use this rule, action, result, impact. So you will give a strong statement and the evidence are there to support you instead of just give a generic, I'm a good leader, I'm a good communicator, I'm a good time management person, that kind of thing. That, that doesn't show the result, doesn't show the impact that you give. So when you give a statement, show the action that you do, result that you achieve, and then end up with the impact that you do. So that will show the value that you added to that process or that activities. That's what the hiring manager look for and give advantage to you later on. Okay, so um, having answered that four question, so it should compromise in just a one page because um, this is because you are still a fresh graduate without any experience. So one or two page is good enough for you to highlight your details, your skills, what you have done. So all the information, um, make it compact, precise, and straight to the point. Don't elaborate and don't put a laundry of the activities that, that you take. For, for example, if you are electrical engineering, don't put all the courses that you take during your studies. Because these this are some of the mistakes that they done that I see is a resume because a lot of uh, fresh graduate, when they do their resume, they put in a lot of uh, the subject they have taken, the list of the subject, because it will just waste of space. The hiring manager do not care about the subject yeah, that you take because we know when you have to do electrical engineering, any engineering subject, management subject, the courses are there and it's only MQA qualified, um, accredited. So we do not know, we don't care about the subject that you have taken. The most important thing is that what you have done and that is the critical part when it comes to your final year project. So your final year project can be the highlight of your achievement during your study. So make sure when you select a final year project, make sure the topics are up to date relevant to the market and what you have delivered give impact or added value to the technology or to the system or even um, if you produce a paper or publication that will add more advantage to you okay so um, you go to the next question please we have covered up all the four questions so I'm going to the next slide on the do and don'ts of the uh, producing the resume so for the do make it a consistent format okay on the bullet this is more on the visibility of your um, resume okay on the phone and kind of thing so just check on your grammar and on the professional email address and the information do not put on non essential information inside your resume because um, the hiring manager just vet through 15 seconds, like I said before. So you only have about five to 10 seconds to capture the attention. So don't put any information that is not relevant, that doesn't contribute to have impact to your resume. Okay, uh, we go to the next slide, please. Okay, uh, so we can download the template of the resume. There's a lot of template that's available in in the web, you can just type at Google, you can just type a uh, template, uh, the current resume, uh, the template, that kind of thing. So the simplest way that uh, I'm gonna share here is using Microsoft Word. You can just type um, at the, when you go to the new uh, tab column, uh, the tab for the new, for the new page of the Word. So you can just write, type resume, and then there will be a lot of templates that are available inside Microsoft uh, Word. So there you can just edit the, the templates that the layout is there. So you just need to add on your information inside the resume. So it will be easier for you instead of you creating a new one, developing your own uh, layout. So you don't spend a lot of time. So you can just use the template that's available in the software. If you want more the fancy one, then you can go to the website. There's a lot of website that are producing 
a lot of template uh, for the resume so you can try and explore there. Okay, um, we go to the next slide, please. Okay, um, coming to the end of uh, this webinar, because we're going to proceed with a Q&A, that will be more interesting after this. So, uh, key takeaways from producing a good resume is that you need to value what you can contribute to the company. Okay, this is the most important thing. Like I said before, your personal branding statement. So, show the value that you can contribute to the company. The company uh, looking for someone that can add value. Okay, so that will be the main criteria that you need to focus on and showcase the value that you can add on if, they are, uh, if you are selected to join that company. Uh, share your accomplishment, not your activities. Okay, if you list down a lot of activities, but what the hiring manager look for is the accomplishment and the achievement that you get from that activities. Okay, uh, show your evidence. Okay, not your opinion. Like I said before, um, you are you saying that you are a good leader, you are a good communicator, you are a good listener, that kind of thing. That is your opinion. That but we need to you need to show your evidence so that people will believe um, the statement that you put instead of just a generic term of, okay, uh, good leader, that kind of things. Okay, show evidence. That one will be uh, more valuable and give advantage to you. Okay, uh, ensure that it's memorable layout. So the layout have to be uh, eye present. So because when the hiring manager vet through a lot of resume, then uh, a good looking resume will help and and improve their mood. Lah. Okay. Um, so make it uh, eye pleasant and memorable so that they can remember your resume. Okay. Uh, it's manageable, not lengthy. Okay. Because according to research, um, for a fresh graduate, one page, uh, one page, two page is the maximum. Okay. More than two page, um, we tend to get ignored by the hiring manager if you are a fresh graduate. Okay. The longer your resume, the less time um to see the, the potential fit for the job that you apply for so the only time that is acceptable to have a resume longer than three pages is when your field or the job that you're applying for requires lists of publication research or other project details that one you can add on um, another page just to list of your publication and your research work Okay, so for entry level candidates, stand out the chance of better to have just one or two page of your resume. Okay, and make your information inside the resume is relevant, not excessive. Okay, make it short, dynamic, and straight to the point. Okay, and lastly, I just uh, want to remind you, and this is my tip and my advice to whenever you write your resume, just keep this rule. When in your statement, state about your action, your result, and impact. So if you follow this rule, then your statement and then your information that you give has value and it adds to advantage to you when the hiring manager reads your resume. Okay, um, so that's all for my tips on how to write an outstanding resume. So I hope the information that I give you here uh, will be helpful, give you a new insight of what to improve and so that you can produce a good resume and get a better chance for you to get a job. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, over to you, Anis. Okay, thank you, Encik Omar, for your sharing session. All right. All right, let me show. With that, we will move to the Q&A session. Um, we have lots of questions from you all here. Okay. Okay, let's take one from Akmal Ramli. His question is, what to write as a fresh, gra fresh graduate without any working without any experience? experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, without any working experience, what do you need to put inside your resume is that, uh, the first thing, uh, is your final year project okay that for me that will be the main 
Um, based on my experience, uh, when I talk to a lot of our manager, okay, for fresh graduate, what they will look at is your first, they will look at your final year project. Okay, what do you do at your final project? What do you achieve during your final project? And the value of your project that you do. Is it just a simple, just for you to pass your degree? Or is it something that is workable or add value to the uh, industry needs? Okay, that's why when you want to do the final year project, my advice is that if you can do internship before your final year project will be good advantage. Okay, during your internship, you can get a lot of information, a lot of insight of the current technology, the current practice in the industry. So you can have idea on what to do during your final year project. Okay, so if your final year project in line with the current um, technology or process at the industry, then you have higher chances to be selected and it can be used as your experience. Okay, it's, it's not only working experience, uh, handling projects, doing uh, project work, showcase your work will give advantage to you. So it's not only about working experience, it's also your final year project can be part of your activities that you achieve that can you, you can share and the hiring manager will look at it. The second one, the hiring manager will look at the activities that you join. The club activities, extracurricular activities, voluntary activities that, that you join. So they want to know that you not only um, uh, study, but at, at the same time you play sport, you have engage with a club, that kind of thing. So they want to know your, your, your it's not only about your academic, but also your behavior. Because when you join the club, when you join um, that kind of activity, be sure that you are multitasking, um, you can do a lot of things, and then you socialize with others. So that also can show your teamwork, your leadership. Let's say if you, join the club and then you are president of that club so you, that can we can see that you have a leadership um, skills there okay if you are join the debate club so we know that you are a good communicator okay so that that's the thing that that's the proof that i'm telling you uh, before this um, you need to showcase um, and show the evidence of your skills it's not only just stating I'm a good leader, but if, if you state that you're a good leader, at the same time you are the president of the club, then that is the evidence. Okay, That will support um, the thing that you write inside your resume. So that will be a good advantage. But uh, for the experience part, use your final project as an uh, advantage to you. Okay, So make sure your final project is good and update with the current technology or current process so that you are in line with the industry needs. Okay, so that's my view on that. Okay, hey, thank you, Encik Omar. Let's move on to the next question. This is a question from Shafira Ayuni Damak. Hi, Encik okay. Omar. As a recruiter, if the candidate had potential in terms of job requirement and experience, but she is currently pregnant, wow, okay. congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> and will deliver her baby by next three months, what will be your decision? Will you hire her or not? Um, it depends on the, the requirement because uh, your due date is, is within the two months, if I'm not mistaken, right? Three months. Three months, okay. So, um, it depends on, on the work. If the work requires you to, it can be done like currently um, now during the MCO this COVID situation where people are working at home. If you can deliver the work at home, so for me, there's no problem in, to hire um, ladies that are currently pregnant. Okay? If the work required to do the physical work, then it will not be suitable okay? at the current time. But if the skill set are there and it's really needed by the company, then the company will wait and they will wait after you deliver and then they will take you after that because um, it's about the skill set. It's not about the, your situation, your situation at, even if um, 
you are not hired yet. Even uh, the staff, um, any any anyone can um, even at the office. Okay, anyone can get pregnant, and that, that that's that's the leader have to manage on that part. So for for your uh, question, it depends on your skill set. If your skill set are needed for that company urgently, so for sure they will hire you. Okay, even if you are pregnant, because uh, it depends on the value that, that you give to the company. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. We have here from Wan Nur Anis Amira. Is there any resume type that can be used for all companies or should we personalize each resume? And what is the best color scheme for the resume background? Yeah, I like this question. Okay. Because uh, when you're producing a resume, okay, it's not, uh, you cannot do one resume fit for all. It's not like a t-shirt, one size fit all. Okay? You need to custom your resume into the requirement of the company that um, will give you a higher chances for you to be called for an interview. You need to tailor your resume uh, based on the requirement. Okay? Let's say if you apply for company A, you, first what you have to do is you look at the job title and then you go to the job description. Find the keywords inside the job description and find the skill set that they require. Okay? Make sure the, the skills, the skill set that they require and the job description that they stated inside the job description are there inside your resume. So most of the company now, they are using uh, ATS, Application Tracking System, which um, they may be developing themselves or using some of the technologies as well. Okay, so what the system does is that they will take your resume and then they will match with the job description. They will do a matching. Okay? If it's matched, then you have high potential of um, to be called for an interview. Okay? If not, then if your resume does not match, then you have less chance of it because uh, the analysis will be done by computer. Okay? The computer will match between the words. So the keywords inside your resume have to match with the keyword of the job description. So you have to tailor your resume um, for you to, to ensure that your resume match with the job description. Just forget, so, so you get the chance of receiving 80% or 100% matching of the job, uh, job fit, okay? So um, I'm going to share you uh, one website. Okay, it's called JobScan. You can just Google um, Google JobScan. Okay, you um, what it does is that you can take your resume, you can upload your resume um, to that website, and then you can upload. You have to upload the job description of the company. Then the system will give some kind of matching. They will do the analysis and they will match. Let's say if you have eighty percent match to that job description, okay? So it will give you a suggestion on how to align more of your resume to match with that uh, job description. Normally, they will just match in terms of your qualification, your skills, and your experience, okay? So if you do one resume and then you submit to a lot of companies, uh, you have lesser chance compared to if you tailor your resume to the specific job that you apply for. Okay. So my advice, uh, if you apply for 10 position and it's a different type of, uh, you look at the job situation, if it's a different type of job, then tailor your resume match with the job description. So you have to understand clearly um, the information that's inside the job description so that you can produce your resume that match uh, with that job. Don't just uh, make one resume and then you send to all of the position that you apply for. You will get less chance if you're doing that. All right. So we can have another question. Yep. Uh, let's take uh, one more, one or two more questions. Okay. 
Okay, um, I think this is a famous question we have by Hani Arifin. Okay, Hani Arifin, if you can share us your name and your email address as well. Okay, his question is, hi, may I know if it's necessary to put our photo in our resume? Okay. Um, first, it depends on the job that you apply for. Okay, if you apply for modeling, if you apply for um, customer service and that kind of thing, yes, it will be a priority to put a photo because that is one of the requirement, a job requirement. Okay, but others, if you have, um, if you put a photo inside the resume, it, it will be get, you will get. Um, it's not advantage, but it's easier for the hiring manager to view and by looking at the photos, they can also um, evaluate your uh, the your professional professionality. Lah, I'm saying, okay, because the way you post, the way you put your your photos, and you taking your photos, so we can. Um, it, it's not. A huge advantage, but if it's in there inside your resume, then it'd be better for the hiring manager just um, to look at it and then um, to look physically um, how you are. Okay. But if you're applying for a job that required uh, customer service and then frontline, frontline where you have to engage with the customer, then that one uh, is a must. Like if you are a student or modeling, yes, they will want to see your photo. Okay. Mm. okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Chima. Let's take one last question. Yeah, sure, again. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, we have here from uh, Chloe. Hi, and Chima. May I know what are Hi. the most favorable skills seek by the employer now and may I know how to excel in the interview thank you I think basically it's just like what is the top skills right that is uh, in demand right now in, in demand, demand right now yeah yeah the top skills that are demanding right now is on the digital technologies okay uh, everything is going digital digital marketing um, the digital everything is moving to the digital world okay we are moving to the technologies so if you have those skills in developing or using the technologies so that will be have uh, giving advantage uh, based on the skill is depend on the job uh, i cannot say that is everything is is too generic okay so it will have to depend on the job that you apply for so when you do a resume, our focus is to, to be selected for an interview. Okay. So for sure, when you apply for a job, you already have in mind what kind of job that you're looking for. Okay, you have background in management, maybe you're looking for marketing or admin work or even HR, that kind of thing. Or if you're engineering, you will look for position uh, match with your skill set. So from there, you have to ensure in your field, what are the current process, what are the current technology that they are using. So make sure you are in line and at top of that, um, top of that skill. So uh, the skill you can develop anywhere, your class, you can go to online class, even there's a lot of online free courses uh, given by universities, even by Harvard, uh, this, the, the universities are uh, popular. A lot of universities now give you free courses. So you can take that even on the government, our government, there's a lot of initiative that you're giving free um, training and courses that you can take. So take advantage of it and explore and keep on uh, learning. Okay, because technology changed very fast right now. Okay. Uh, 10 years back, yes, uh, it's okay, but now technology changed rapidly. So every year, like before this, uh, early of the year, we never have this kind of career fair. I think this, this year is the first time we are doing the virtual career fair. Yes, that's right. Yeah, right. 
people so, wouldn't think of having, of joining virtual career fair before so, this. this this is the first year that we are doing the virtual career fair so we are still exploring the technology how to make it better how to facilitate this kind of thing so thing changes we have to repeat so we have to be agile so that one of the skill um it's important in the current kind of situation. You have to be agile, adapt to change, and make yourself prepared for any changes that are required. Okay, so you have to be agile and have that mindset of um, le- willing to learn, willing to change, and accept the change and adapt yourself to the situation. Okay. Okay. Right. All right, I guess that's all the time we have for questions and answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before I wrap this up, just like to run a quick poll for everyone to participate in. And the poll is what are the topics that you would like to hear from TM? So go ahead and vote for your choices. And let's take one minute to go. Yeah. Actually, Omar, while we wait, maybe uh, any. Last words uh, from you. Okay. Um, firstly, I would like to thank everyone for spending and uh, investing one hour of your time to join this webinar. And uh, I hope the thing that I shared to you give um, you a better insight of what is required by the hiring manager or the employer, so that you can improve your resume and give higher chances uh, for you to get job. Uh, I know the current situation, the COVID situation, uh, not a lot of company um, hiring right now. So don't give up. Just keep sending your resume. Tailor your resume to the job that you required and don't afraid to fail. Just submit your resume. If you keep on submitting your resume and then um, you have higher chances uh, to get employed. Okay. And even at TM, for next year, we are doing a lot of uh, initiative for graduates' employability. So one of it is we are having uh, intake for Proto-J. So if you are interested to join Proto-J for TM, then you can uh, visit our career website, tmcareer.tm.com.my. Okay, you can view the job vacancies there. So currently we have about three vacancies that we open open up. And we have a project program that you can apply and also internship that you can apply to 3M career at tm.com.my. Okay. Um, another thing, the last tip that I will give to you, uh, do update your LinkedIn, create your network. So network play important roles um, for you get for you to explore the current needs, the current technology, the requirement and the kind of thing. Even the vacancies at the company, normally they advertise in LinkedIn and also the job portal. Okay, so um, do follow TM uh, LinkedIn and also um, just drop by to TM Career website just to view any vacancies that are available. And the last word for me, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay at home. And if you want to chat more with me, then you can follow my LinkedIn or at Umar Abdul Aziz. You just, sign, um, you just follow me at the LinkedIn. So hope to see you again in the next webinar session. Okay. So thank you everyone. Great sharing, and Umar, thank you so much. Right. All right, uh, just stand by because we will have a group photo session after this. But uh, before we get to that, let me share the results from all of you. Okay, so we can see that uh, you all interview want interview tips as the next topic. Okay, so okay. note it. Forty-five <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's have the group photo session before we wrap this up. Um, Any of you who wants to join, just raise your hand and I will invite you to the panelists. Okay, we have Noor Afika, nice. Okay. 
There we go. All right, once you guys are in, just uh, on your webcam, if you have a background sound going on at the at your place, uh, just say, just mute yourself. Um, Hanis, before yep. we and close up, uh, I forgot one thing to yep. share with everyone that uh, TM currently we are offering um, for you all to personal profile assessment PPA. All right. Okay. Uh, this assessment we are doing with uh, Harrison. So we open up until 18 of December for you to participate. Um, you can scan the QR code. Okay. So you can do the personal, personal profile assessment, which will show your tendency of your behavior. So this one will be advantage for you if you add with your resume. You when you submit your resume for application, uh, do attach this PPA. Okay, um, the hiring manager will look at it and it will give you advantage compared to others. So we are doing uh, this PPA free because uh, if you do it uh, online, there's a lot. The online you have to subscribe if you want a detail of the analysis. For this one, uh, TM giving free during this webinar and during this career virtual career fair. So take advantage of it. So it's only open uh, until December. So take advantage of it, um, do it. And then the result normally is valid for uh, two years. So you can use it when you're applying for a job. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. So with that, let's have the group photo session. Okay, everyone's looking fantastic. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let me set this up. Okay, everyone ready? Oh, okay, we have, ah, all right. Okay, thank you, let's do it. All right, we still have one more coming in. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Awesome. Hi. Okay, thank you everyone. So let me wrap this up. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen again. Okay. Oh, it's all right. Maybe next next session you can join us, yeah? No worry. <laughs> okay. So before I wrap this up, uh, again, I would like to remind everyone that uh, if you all enjoyed this session, uh, go ahead and scan, uh, no, go ahead and vote TM as your graduate's choice in the government yeah. link companies category as well as the telecommunication category. Um, you can vote in using by scanning this QR code or visiting the link below. Um, share with your friends because the more that you share, the higher chance that you stand to win attractive prizes. Uh, prizes ranging from an iPhone, iPhone, Apple iPhone 12 to a HP Spectre laptop. Yeah, and again. If you are still looking for your career opportunity, go ahead and visit TM Virtual Booth. Uh, they, are, they are providing a lot of career tips and job vacancies at, 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 the, at, the, at the virtual booth. Uh, you can find it at Talent Bank Digital Career Festival. Uh, it's at www.digitalcareerfest.com. And this is the last week and we will be ending it on next Monday. Okay, so go ahead and explore more at the website. Again, for those who have not yet scanned the QR code for your free PPA, you can just scan the QR code or you can scroll up the chat to see the link that I've uh, just sent to you guys. And with that, thank you so much everyone. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the group photo session. Thank you to, the, to Daniel and Asmui for your participation. And of course, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Encik Omar 
and yeah. the TM team for providing this opportunity. Um, okay, as a last, um, yeah, just uh, one last reminder. Yes, your early, your attendance is recorded, but for your ELE points, please refer back to your university. Yeah? So with that said, uh, thank you everybody. Thank you everyone. We have, um, that'll be the last webinar session that we will have for this period. And uh, hopefully that we will have more opportunity to share with you guys amazing webinar session in the next cycle, which will be in next year, 2021. All right. So with that, thank you everyone. Um, and stay safe. Right. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, Talambang. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys.